The ocean is the world's oldest hood, so makes sense that the gang wars of the animals in it are titanic. There's Avengers levels of conflict happening under the waves, and in the center of it all is Sea Thanos. The orca's range is everywhere, its diet is everything. Their breeding season is a day that ends in Y. They hunt whenever and no one ever hunts them. Orsinus orca is really that guy. It's an apex evolutionary attack dolphin, known to give great white sharks PTSD, and scare the literal, no figurative feces out of the biggest predator alive. We'll get to that. The cetaceous sea panda is an intellectual vibe check with a street name, Killer Whale, a name they got after ancient whalers watched what a barcoded armada could do to a barnacle bus stop. With the size, intelligence, and power of friendship, the whale killer might just be nature's favorite, and there's virtually nothing on the ocean census that can't get orked. But all that dominance has a cost. Like an ocean kingpin, orcas have made a lot of enemies, and there's at least two that'll bully them back. It all comes back to the often forgotten rule of nature. A predator has to be convinced you're worth the effort. The prey will turn you into past tense before you go offense. The world of whale beef is messy with alliances, rivalries, and straight mob mentality. Cause for every orca, there's a pack of pilot whales. This is what orcas see in their nightmares, allegedly. Let's talk about it. Every dolphin is a whale, but not every whale is a dolphin, and pilot whales are a very big dolphin. They're the second biggest dolphin, only beat by the ocean equalizer. Pilot whales look like off-brand belugas, and that's pretty close to their personality. Pilot whales have been called the Ferraris of the sea, being clocked at over 30 miles per hour while hunting, and they'll use this speed to run up on pods of orcas. That, and the fact that pilots can roll in pods that get to over 100, is why killer whales may have a healthy amount of fear in a deep fake dolphin. Scientists in Iceland have seen orcas go from socializing, to dead silent, to suddenly synchronizing a retreat before a group of pilot whales pulled up. In some cases, the orcas were literally run out by the pilots, with both parties porpoising during the chase. And we know for a fact, pilot whales actively look for problems, since scientists in Norway played the sounds of orcas feeding, and that got their boat confronted by the pilot pack. It's even escalated to pilot whales imitating the calls of killer whales, and considering killer whales in different areas can have different dialects, pilot whales learn to lampoon the exact kind of orca in their neighborhood. Some say it's a form of ocean incognito, where they use sound to camouflage. But there's a world where pilots got so sick of the gimmicks they learned a language just to talk that cetacean sh**. But it's not one-sided, as orcas will pack up and prey on pilot whales. There's also been more than one case of a group of orcas traveling with an orphan baby pilot whale, adopting it, either as progeny or a practice dummy. My theory is that the trauma of losing a baby drives a mother orca to do the next best thing. Kidnap an infant pilot whale and try to brute force parenthood. It's a conflict that still has a lot of questions, and this story might just have another chapter. Cause what are the odds the orca's two biggest enemies are friends? Humpbacks prove you can always be a bigger hater. And there's no bigger hater than the one that interferes with orca hunts. Even when the target isn't another humpback. In five decades of studying humpback orca spats, in only 11% of them did the killer whales actually go after them. The other 89 involved orcas plotting on a completely different animal and the humpbacks getting involved to play defense. In fact, in over 100 encounters, the humpbacks approached the orcas 37% of the time and the orcas were the instigators 26%. Meaning, when scientists could tell who wanted smoke 58% of the time, the humpback mafia started it. Why? Well, maybe ask the pilot whales. Pilot whales and humpbacks have been seen socializing off Hawaii, with humpbacks even seeming to pet the pilots with their fins. They've even been caught communicating with each other. Two completely different species. And it's not an accident. About 200 instances of whales and dolphins interacting were recorded across 19 different species, and what was found was that not only were a third of all humpback encounters classified as positive, with the whales seeming to seek out the dolphins, humpbacks were way more dolphin tolerant than others like the blue, fin, and northern white whales. And let's not just slide past the interspecies communication. That is wild, and who knows what they're saying. They could be plotting the most devious hit on an orca. There's no Rosetta Stone for that. Of course, that's a joke. One, because I don't believe they have their version of a white, pointy, road pep rally to plot against an apex predator, but also too, humpbacks aren't exactly immune to the habits of a pilot whale. According to the Latin American Journal of Aquatic Mammals, pilot whales often rage bait humpbacks, with short fin pilot whales seen antagonizing the humpback variety off Puerto Rico, harassment that the whales were visibly stressed by. One sighting saw a gang of pilots approach a pod of humpback whales, with the humpbacks reacting by trumpeting and tail slapping, basically a cetacean crash out. 
One theory says the pilot whale is a kleptoparasite, whose meal prep involves harassing a humpback into stress regurgitating its last meal so the pilot can swoop in for the steal. Mind you, humpbacks in Puerto Rico probably haven't eaten since they were in the Arctic, so it's like picking a fight with a Muslim dead in the middle of Ramadan. In the Mona Passage off Puerto Rico, a bunch of pilot whales pulled up to harass a humpback pod, until the humpbacks dove underwater and resurfaced a distance away, until the pilots peeped them and went over to choose conflict again. This cycle continued like a game until the humpbacks eventually left the area, and chances are a game is exactly what was happening. Some genuinely believe that pilot whales mess with other whales for fun, not for food, simply love of the game. They're just being dicks. And humpbacks are the whales that tolerate them, but what they don't accept is anything orca. In 2012, a pod of orcas murked a grey whale calf, but the plot twist was the 14 humpbacks that rushed in to back up the two already on scene. And what scientists saw was the humpbacks gatekeeping the killer whales, with one even putting himself next to the past tense calf and wailing out any time an orca got close. For six and a half hours, the humpback hood calorie blocked the orcas, even ignoring an enticing swarm of nearby krill to remain to float on business. You see, orcas don't go after humpbacks often, but when they do, it's usually targeting a calf with its mother, which usually involves separating them and reverse baptizing the baby. The thing is, adult humpbacks are much less fearful of a monochrome mammal and are triggered by the sounds of an orca hunt and will come swimming, especially since any young humpback in the area are likely a relative of their own. So they're on sight, well, on sound with orcas, even if the target ends up being a pacific placemat. Cause the lesson every humpback learns is, no orca alive shall prosper. That's on pod. Mind you, not all killer whales are whale killers. Only about 10 to 15% of them are mammal eating killer whales. Meaning humpbacks might just be profiling. They see color, two in particular. But if humpbacks could see everything killer whales do, they'd probably let them slide a lot more. Humpbacks have more than a zebra to stress about. In 2017 in Mossel Bay, South Africa, scientists watched an injured whale get jumped by eight great white sharks. It's not often, but great whites will pack up the young, sick, or injured, especially during migration. It's rare, but the chances aren't zero. Unless an orca's around. That wasn't a joke earlier. Orcas legitimately give jaws PTSD, and it's scientifically proven that great whites will abandon even favorite hunting grounds for up to a year if they even sense a giant oppression dolphin once. In fact, the number of great whites has flatlined in many places off South Africa, like False Bay, so low that it's legitimately affecting tourism. And one of the biggest non-human reasons might be orcas. Two in particular. Since 2015, port and starboard have been raining hell on the whites, with many late great shark carcasses washing ashore with missing livers, including a 16-foot female named Khaleesi. These two orcas in arms have terrorized sharks of any species. In 2023, the duo life deprived nearly 27 get hold on, 27 gill sharks in one day. And starboard might be the biggest menace. Fun fact, Starboard is the first orca ever recorded murking a great white shark by himself after eviscerating one in less than two minutes completely solo. Port and Starboard are named after how they tend to split the sharks they kill, left and right. That's not true, it's based on their fins. But for about a decade, these two have been violating sharks without remorse, recourse as a final course to force soul divorce, not to beat a dead horse, but killer whales ironically do humpbacks a solid, as the South African rest stop of their migration now has way less sharks. <laughs> But we've known that sharks tend to get their cookies taken by orcas. But great whites can also get sent packing by their own prey. It's well known that a sea lion to a shark is basically a chew toy, with one fur seal having no chance against a 16 foot 2000 plus pound bioweapon. But this movie has an alternate ending, with gangs of fur seals mobbing hunting sharks. Imagine getting chased out of a drive through by a horde of homicidal hot dogs. That's just shark's reality. It's the same mob mentality humpbacks use on orcas, and fur seals will press a great white into retreating back to sea. This weaponized friendship has been clocked all the way back to 2005, with a group of adult male Australian fur seals jumping a great white shark that wandered too close to the colony's pups. But orcas might have just lit a fuse under the fur seals. The decline of great whites in places like False Bay may have honestly boosted the confidence of the seals. Not only do they now act way bolder, studies show that the stress hormone levels of fur seals in False Bay went down as the shark numbers did. Orcas might take the seal out the sea and leave it with an L, but they might have also emboldened the fur seals against their biggest op. And few realize how horrific a family of fur seals open carrying confidence can be. Although they likely did need much, cause apparently seals can't get along with each other. In many places, elephant and fur seals cross paths. 
and they do not get along. They're both pinnipeds, but technically fur seals aren't true seals. They're actually closer to sea lions. Elephant seals see all that and choose to be the world's biggest bigots about it, since some have a bad habit of using baby fur seals as chew toys. Buffle is a 14-foot migrant that annually shows up on Cape Town beaches, where he has a yearly tradition of using young false seals as stress balls for his mouth. One elephant seal was caught grabbing a pup, making a disturbingly literal baby shower before swallowing it whole. Clearly, fur seals have way more to worry about than just sharks, but sharks might not have a bigger enemy than dolphins. Dolphins don't exactly bully sharks. A study done in Shark Bay, Australia found that 74% of bottlenose dolphins were found with at least one scar from a shark attack, and more than a third of those in Sarasota Bay have had a chunk or two taken out of them. So the catch is, while dolphins are a small part of a shark's diet, almost every dolphin will have at least one bad memory of a shark. The dolphin default is actually to avoid sharks, so not exactly like pilot whales to orcas, but they will gang up on them when they have the advantage. Usually, it's just for intimidation, but sometimes it involves dolphins ramming sharks in the gills so they choke on their own blood. So basically, sharks prey on dolphins and leave dolphins preying, with dolphins usually social distancing from them. But dolphins will also mob sharks, and in a lot of studies, dolphins were the ones initiating harassment, like in the form of using a baby shark as a volleyball. But it also helps that they have an alliance with another member of the cetacean persuasion, one that sends sharks swimming. Or at least it would, if it wasn't a false killer whale. That is called a false killer whale, which sucks because it's way more than an imitation orca. Not to be confused with the pilot whale, because where the pilot whale looks like a black rough draft beluga, the not an orca looks like a free willy paralysis demon. On the surface, that is Satan's favorite cetacean creation, slender whale body built. They have no business looking like the black air force of orcas, and those eyes, good god those eyes. Those are the eyes of an ocean chain chomp that shouldn't be trusted and that's why you don't judge a whale by its mugshot. False killer whales will often form relationships with other dolphins, especially bottlenoses. These bonds can last years and cover hundreds of ocean miles, especially in New Zealand, where falsies will actively seek out dolphins, not just to hunt together, but to play too, and scientists swear that individuals can recognize each other even after years of separation. In fact, false killer whales and dolphins will often merge pods to form a giant super pod, up to a thousand strong. It goes deeper, with stories of falsies responding to the distress calls of other species, and even aiding other dolphins during childbirth. As close as you think pseudo-orcas and bottlenoses are, they're closer. How close? Well, when a male falsy and a female bottle face get close enough, the outcome is called a wolfin. It's also not just dolphins. Anyone who dives enough will confirm that false killer whales are one of the friendliest things you can run into in the ocean, and there's even stories of them offering fish to strangers. But of course, the world of whale politics is messy, and falsies don't have goodwill with everyone. They're also liable to get t-boned by an orca, who sometimes show them what a real killer looks like. And if you think that'd make them a friend to humpback whales, falsies have also been known to harass humpback whales, with one case in Hawaii where a group murked one. But there's another animal they find conflict with, and you'd probably never guess it. Because respectfully, as the biggest predator on the planet, sperm whales have no business getting bullied by anyone. Yet, you can find reports of false killer whales running up on sperm whales the same way pilots do to orcas. Even back in the 90s, scientists somehow witnessed a group of sperm whales in the Galapagos get ambushed by a gang of 25 falsies, joined by, interestingly, 15 bottlenose dolphins. I told you they were tight. But it was likely a bluff that didn't accomplish any real damage, which isn't always the case. There is one animal with the audacity to hunt modern day leviathan, but at this point it should be no surprise. Orcas are ocean Stanley. They pop up everywhere. They usually avoid each other, but a party of plus size predators working as a wolf pack will target the young, sick, or isolated. But orcas predictably can get bold about it. Back in 1997, 35 killer whales attacked a pod of 9 sperm whales resulting in a four-hour onslaught that left every sperm whale injured and one dead. 20 years later, a pod of eight killer whales ran up on a group of 100 sperm whales off Sri Lanka. That's not a typo. Nobody died, but the audacity was nearly fatal. Especially since sperm whales, for whatever reason, don't really fight back. Their main defense is to get into a formation called a rosette, with the weak put in the middle. There's that, and serving a poop slushy at orcas, since real-life mobies will also use a cloud of diarrhea as offensive self-defense. This bowel bath bomb is sometimes enough to save their lives, but it also means orcas have the ocean's biggest predators soiling themselves by the metric shit ton. But it seems there's one predator orcas won't hunt, and it's the most successful and most destructive one of it's, it's us. You know it's us. Outside of a glorified fishbowl, orcas have never been known to kill a human, or at least never been caught doing it. 
In fact, not too long ago, there was a time where humans hunted alongside orcas, with the two working together in New South Wales, Australia. Basically, the orcas would herd the whales to shore and then alert the whalers with a tail slap, and the law of tongue meant the orcas were entitled to the lips and tongue of anything they helped you kill. Even today, a wild orca is less likely to feed on you than just feed you. For as long as we've known them, humans have been on the orca whitelist, and that might just be changing. You see, orcas are intelligent enough to have different cultures and trends. Like one orca wore a salmon as a hat and within a week had the whole pod doing it. And a recent orca trend involves sinking yachts. It started in 2020, with a pod ramming and eventually downing a 50-foot yacht off Gibraltar. Since then, there have been over 700, again not a typo I checked, of these attacks, and most of the real damage was to the ship's rudders. Mind you, some of these attacks lasted over 2 hours, so it's really looking like humpback levels of hating. Also while researching, I realized there's more than one case of killer whales failing a hunt, only to then target the boat of the researchers watching it happen out of spite. So what are the orcas cooking? I have my theories. One is that orcas are treating hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of vessels as toys, and all it would take is one orca messing with a boat for fun and telling his homies for a new trend to hit humanity. Or it could be revenge. All that would take is one orca having a bad experience with a boat for the whole family to slide fueled by generational rage. Especially if it happened to a grandmother, cause you know the moment she brought it to the pod, it'd be up for everyone. In fact, chances are, they teach this same behavior to their young. There's a lot we still don't know about the ocean, and all the nonsense that happens in it. But one thing I'll say every time I speak on anything dolphin is that animals aren't good. Animals aren't evil. They're just animals. Animals just trying to make it to the next day any way they can. It's not Orca's fault they're just that much better at it. Simply a skill issue for everyone else. I'ma keep saying it, as long as there's people on Twitter saying I want them dead. So probably forever. But until then, drink water, hug your mother. If you see an orca, apologize. Doesn't matter what for, just do it. Support the whales, call your father, and I'ma see y'all in the next one.